Now it's going to get a little interesting, and, and I wanted to show this particular sheet because there's a lot going on here, and I'm showing it at a very you know zoomed out level. Over on the left hand side, we have the actual Benford Law digit patterns that are expected for Benfords. Then to the right of that, we have the first two digit Benford Law patterns as well. And then what I did was I copied and pasted from the various pivots that we have here. So take this pivot here, if we highlight these cells, do a copy uh, or you know right click uh, copy and go into the Benford for scoring sheet. I then pasted that information here and I just did a, a, a standard paste, but let's let me just do it over here so you can kind of see what I did. Um, so I just do a standard paste and at that point it just brings over the values in that with any sort of formatting. So if you just do a control V or in the case that I did was I just did a paste, you know, right click paste, it'll bring those values in. Now I'm just going to delete that uh, for, for our sake. Um, what I've done here in this particular spreadsheet is I've copied and pasted from the first pivot these values here for 08, 09. Then I also have done the same thing for the first two down here and then we have a variety of calculations that are taking place along the lines here so let's talk about how we get these calculations in here and then how we're going to use this as part of a scoring mechanism in a, a another set of sheets here in Excel. So what, what I'm ultimately trying to do is I wanted to take the 2009 data, which is here, again it was starting at like record 38, uh, 48,000, and this is all the 2009 data starting at 1 to 1231 2009, again it was like 43,000 rows or so of data, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use between this sheet and that sheet we're going to bring in all of these scores. So let's talk about how we now do that. So the first thing, let, let's just take a simple one here, the first digit pattern. This was the copy and paste that we did from the first pivot. What I then did was I do a VLOOKUP. So we're going to get really good at VLOOKUPs here where you're going to, let's just take a look at this function. I'm looking up J3, which is this one, and I'm looking at the range and notice the range here is actually set with these dollar signs and the way to do that is to, to set this up, set up the range, highlight that range of A2 to B10 and then select the F4 button and the F4 button will automatically put this information in here so let, let's just, uh, I'll just redo that just so you can see it. If I select this range here and, whoops let's uh, delete that. If I select this range here and select the F4 button, notice how it will bring that in. I then want to carry over the column 2, which would be what is the value in column 2, when there's a match based on J, in this case J3, to this range. And you want to type in false, so that's the column 2, and then false here is you want to make it a direct match. And as you go through the VLOOKUP, you could see here down below, it's giving you like a little bit of a help as to what is, is being desired here. So uh, by, by setting up that VLOOKUP in the expected value, I can carry over the Benford Law that is expected within each one of these categories. So notice here we have the 1 through 9, the 1 through 9 is here. Same thing true here. We have the expected value over here. We're V lookuping uh, it into this category here, and and in many cases because uh, so that that's also being done here. And then once I've done that, I then just kind of focusing in, just kind of keep it focused on this particular calculation up above here, the first digit, just to keep it simple. So once I have this Benford law. I can now take the count percentage, so this one is going to be the count percentage difference between M3, which is this column here, and K3, so that's this one here, divided by 
k3. So it's kind of the, the count difference as a percentage of the original value. So, you know, how have things changed from 2009 to 2008 as a percentage? And I also do that as a sum difference as well because I, I find it kind of interesting. So that's more the summation test that we talked about. And then we also have a difference to Benford. And the difference to Benford is going to be the, uh, in this case, 2009 M minus Benford Law and then divided by Benford Law. So O3, what, what was expected, which is Benford's Law. So that's kind of a difference uh, to Benford's as a percentage for 2009. So what I'm trying to do here, and just these, this quick example here, is come up with what is my count difference as a percentage, and what is my difference to Benford's Law as a percentage. And I carry that down as well to the first two-digit testing as well, and, and basically use the same format above, but instead of it being the first digit, it's now the first two digits down below here. Now that alone might be useful enough for you to take a look at and utilize, but I, I want to take it one, you know, many steps forward. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this count as a percentage difference, which is this column P, 2009 to 2008, and I just copied that. Notice here these values are just copied over to here. And I then judgmentally created a score for each differential. So I just judgmentally looked at it and said, well, if it's a really big change, let's make it a 20% score, or in this case, a, a low change or a negative change, let's make it a 20% score. But as things became just a small change, you know, maybe make it five points, and this one I made zero. The, the goal of this was to make this 100 points. So I, you don't have to do, use this, but this was the approach I used, and that was for the first digit. So I did that count as a percentage, which is this one here. Then I took the sum difference as well, and I judgmentally added a score to that, depending on how large it was. Now you could get much more, and, and I'll just show down here, I mean, you could calculate some statistics on the total set of change for this range and say, well, you know, the, the median change is 0.06% and hence anything that's two standard deviations over, I want to give it this score and that score. But I, I just did it more judgmentally. I just kind of eyeballed it and gave scores depending on what I thought was reasonable and again trying my best to kind of get back to the 100% at the end. So I did this for the first digit and I did it as a count difference as a percentage, the sum difference as a percentage, and the difference to Benford's as a percentage, and I calculated a score for each one or added a score for each one. And I did the same thing for the first two digits down below here. So again, just, just kind of looking at this, I took the count percentage difference for the row labels and added a score, the sum difference added a score, and the difference to Benford and added a score. And as you notice, because we have, you know, in this case, 10 to 99 showing up here, and th this might be the better way to show it, 10 to 99 down here, that, you know, you, you really can't give a score very high. I mean, you'll end up blowing the 100% the or the 100 point scoring pretty quickly if you, you know, start adding scores of 10% here or whatever, because there's so many to spread out. But again, you know, just using the same kind of judgmental format, uh, you could get a little more calculated and, and start creating a mean and a median and a mode and, and using that, but I just did it judgmentally. So I am now just creating in col columns U to AE this scoring mechanism, and I'm doing it based on first digit and first two digit. Over to the right here, I took the last two digits, and I took the difference between the last two digits this year to last year, difference as a percentage, just calculated similar ways that we've talked about before, added a score to the last two digits now. And now I have, you know, lots of these different scores that I'm using um, that, that we're now going to combine together. And my rationale for doing this, going back to the analytical procedures from the AICPA, was to have many more indicators to start looking at expected values, which is Benford's law, or external expected values. Also taking a look at, at ranges over time, or trend analysis for my own internal values, and, and really trying to come up with as, as strong and uh, as many items as possible so that I can create a really strong model. So 
like I said, we have the Benford for scoring, which is just now these columns here, and the 2009 scoring. And the 2009 scoring, all I'm going to do is now take a look at, okay, notice how this is the first two digits. Let's kind of scroll into this. Maybe we'll just do it on the first digit here. So on this first one digit, I then can do a VLOOKUP of that first one digit, go back to my Benford for scoring, go into this range here that, that was here, and say, depending on the range that I've set, given that that's the number one, the score is zero. If this, the, the first one is an eight, the score is five. Let's go over to here. Notice, score is eight, I've given it a five. So how did we do this VLOOKUP? What I've done is I've said, I'm going to take F4, which is the first digit. I'm going to look at that Benford for scoring sheet, U2 to W11. Again, now it's three columns of data. And I want the data that's in the third column, which is the score. Again, I want a perfect match. That's why I put false there. And I'm carrying that score over now to here. So I've created a score based on each digit pattern, count difference, sum difference, difference to Benford, first digit, second digit, last digit. And that is, notice how I've laid out these particular columns. What we're ultimately driving to is in this first digit, first two digit, Benford law, last two digit, is this total score. So what I'm trying to say is, let's take this one amount, so let's take uh, this uh, $81 in this particular case. What is the first digit score count difference 2009 to 2008? Again, we're testing 2009's data here. What is the first digit count score? What's the first, the first digit sum difference score? What is the first digit Benford digit score for an eight? And, you know, following and, and so forth and so on until you get to a final score for that particular number. And, and actually, 127, you'll, you'll see, is pretty high up on the chart. Uh, uh, this particular number, score of 33 in totality for $175, wasn't scored that much. And now I can score all 43,000 amounts and do so using this collective scoring. So, you know, what we're trying to do here using Benford's Law and using the scoring methodology is to say, I don't really care if it's a first digit problem or a second digit problem or last digit. I'm looking across the board for changes and differences between this year and last year, first digit, first two, Benford's Law, last two, etc. And instead of really focusing in on each one, I'm really just now looking at this total score f uh, column. So that's the total score that we're now calculating. And like we said, we, we have a lot of the VLOOKUPs here that we can utilize and you can go back to in the spreadsheet that we're giving you so that you can really see, okay, where does this, you know, this uh, first two count different score, it's U16 to W105 of the Benford for scoring. So let's just go there just to, so we have U16 to W105 down below here and you see that that's where it's pulling it from and then it's based on the third column and pulling that score into this one. So it's a little complicated because you're you're bringing in so many different scores to this one particular spreadsheet. But again, how much more powerful is this that we're now just not looking at it as one item but looking at it in a more collective way? And once we've scored this, we can now start graphing it because I, I think having this total score is interesting. You know, having this whole column is interesting and you might want to just sort the column from high to low or look for the large values, the small values, maybe get a statistic on it. But what's going to be even more powerful, as we'll show you, is when you start to graph these values and then when you start to summarize these values based on who entered it and the supplier and the date. So we can look, are there certain days of the, the year where the scores go way out of line or where a certain supplier just has numbers that just don't rack up to what we've done in the past and what Benford Law has to say about things. And again, going back to AICPA analyticals, this is a much more powerful test because you're using so many values, internal data, external data, 
and you're almost creating a bit of a, a reasonable test or, or a regression analysis by doing it this way because now you're going to just be looking at those values that really show up and are just not consistent with everything that you know about number theory.